When a person is talking themselves out of your life, let them. I think when you are a person like me that has abandonment issues or we suffer from an anxious attachment style, we kind of hold on to people so tightly that in turn we're hurting ourselves and keeping others hostage. I didn't finally get to a point where I was just okay where other people stayed or left until I experienced the pain of losing someone I didn't want to lose and after experiencing that pain and healing myself from that, I realized that hmm, I was always okay. The hardest part is the departure when you have to realize or get to the point where, ha, huh, this person isn't supposed to be in my life. This person knows the things that could potentially make me feel confident or make me feel special or make me feel wanted, but they're choosing not to do that because they do not want to be here. And as hard as it is for us to accept, the longer that we wait around, hoping that this person is going to change their mind about how they feel about staying in our lives is it's doing more damage than it is good i'm one of those people that you call loyal to a fault and i am tired of it and if you are someone like that too you don't even realize why they see that because maybe the fear of attachment and wanting to be had and wanting to be kept is superseding your dignity and the respect that you have for yourself, you land yourself in positions that you're not even receiving what you deserve, you're having to compromise your worth, you're in situations where everyone else is satisfied with you, um, with you but you are very seldom satisfied by, by how they treat you, and it is a one-sided thing. I remember I met someone a few years back and he was talking to me about his friend and the things that his friend does for that specific friend group, and I was like, wow, that's really nice. And he finally admitted to me that, yeah, he doesn't really have a lot of people in his life. So he does all of these things because he wants to belong. He does all of these things because he wants to be kept. And I was like, wow. And you can see that. He said, yes, I see that because I didn't grow up with that abandonment. And then I said, so you use it to your advantage. And he said, yeah, everyone does. And I was like, who? I could feel heat just rising in me because I've been that person. I've been that friend who so greatly wanted to be kept. I wanted to be everything for everyone. I didn't realize how small it made me look. They knew that they could have me in the palm of their hand. So I would dish out all of this service, all of this good. And... It was never really met with what I needed. No one ever really asked me how they could help me. And if it doesn't kill you, when you realize it, it just makes you better for it. At first it makes you cold. At first it makes you angry, I'm not gonna lie. At first it makes you probably feeling not the best. But once you realize yourself, and you realize that hmm, all of the goodness that I've been getting, giving out, I needed to give to myself, that's when life kind of kicks over and you change. I think one of the most important things that an anxious attachment style person or someone that has suffered from abandonment should do is speak less and listen more. I didn't realize by my great conversation skills because I loved being that friend or that person in someone's life that never wanted them to feel alone. So I was always invested in their conversations. I always had something to offer their conversations. I always was the one to talk if they were maybe a little bit more reserved or wasn't able to navigate in conversations. And in me over talking, and me speaking for them, I was able to give more. But when it came time for me to receive something, receive some type of encouragement, they just did not know how to be that because I did the bulk of the work. Who encourages the encourager? Who gives to the giver? 
And sometimes when you are in situations where even the person that you've given your all to doesn't even have the capacity to give half of what you've given, it is hurtful. And you might cry and you might feel very uh, sad and upset, maybe more at yourself than anyone else. But I want that to be a reminder that you have the capacity to give it to yourself and i know sometimes it feels like a punishment they can have me they can have someone and i'm just left with myself and of course it feels like that at first but what you're doing is you're shifting the algorithm of the universe when you give all of that love and that energy and that nurturing energy to yourself what you do is you put yourself in an orbit of people that know how to do the same things for themselves in the way they are able to do to others there are people just like you that give just as much and they're giving it to the wrong people too but once they start to pour back into themselves something changes they are able to recognize more what and who is more worthy of their time and space and that's what I want for you. And it may take you kind of taking a step back for a couple of months, regrouping, nurturing yourself before maybe you get back out there to either date again, get back into your friends groups and know how you can invest your energy and time into them. For the people that feel like all they do is pour and no one is pouring into you, I wanna be that friend that is pouring into you to tell you that you are valid for everything that you feel. And sometimes someone validating the way that you feel is enough for healing. And I know I wish I could give you back everything that you've ever given someone else, but you know, that is not necessarily how this goes. So now we have to find ways that we can replenish ourselves and allow that to be whatever it means for you. If it's going to the gym, if it's taking yourself out to dinner once a month, if it is um, going to Bath and Body Works and getting yourself a good candle or something, you know what I'm saying? Like anything, the smallest things, try to find that thing and do it. And the more you do it, the better you'll feel. And practice ways of giving to yourself as much as you've given to so many other people and i'm telling you your endorphins will start kicking in you're starting to get real happy and shit you're gonna get beautiful your skin is gonna clear up you're gonna sleep better and um that's what i want for you another thing i want you to do is stop guiding people's steps much like stop talking over people when they're talking themselves out of your life. Sometimes when people are expressing their truth and it does not align with us, we know exactly what we need to do, but the fear of abandonment and everything that we know we need to do, there's a fear there and we don't want to have to do it. We don't want to have to take a step back from you. We don't want to have to not talk to you ever again. And we try to guide their steps. We try to lead them into how to love us. We try to tell them what to say. We try to give them the answers on how to be loved. And when a person is invested in loving you and treating you the way that you need to be treated and being your friend, they're going to want to know. They're going to be intrigued about ways to love you because no one is perfect and someone is bound to mess up but there's a difference between someone actually wanting to learn or someone assuming that they have it figured out and being upset at you for being hurt by their inability to love you the way you want to be loved because i don't want to love anyone that assumes that they have me figured out to put in a box the way that they love me, chuck it at me and say, well, this is all I got for you. What? What? I'm sorry. That's not love. And it, it sounds like sometimes gaslighting when they say, well, you, you, if I'm not doing it your way, then it's not enough. You got damn right. You got damn right. If I have 
the patience to tell you like, hey, as a friend, I don't want to be talked to like that. Hey, like, I know that when you say this, you mean that, but to me, it's just not how I like to be talked to. And they cannot accept that. What they are telling you is outside of what you do for them, they do not know how to love you the way that you need to be loved. And it's okay to leave people alone that don't know how to love you. You don't have to hold on to something that doesn't feel good because you're a nice person. You don't have to be a martyr. Like, it's okay. Trust the honesty of a person's words and know when it is time to go. Trust the honesty of a person's actions and know that if they actually felt in alignment with what they were saying, they wouldn't treat you the way that they would. They wouldn't treat you the way that they did. They wouldn't have said all of the things that they said to you. And once you know the truth, let that be enough. You don't have to keep waiting for signs. You've had 11 signs two weeks ago and sometimes creating a strategy on how you're going to maneuver is different because you don't know how to love less. You don't know how to pour in trickles. You love big, you know, you go hard for the people that you care about. So we have to discover boundaries and it's not going to feel good for them. But wouldn't you rather having all of you than settling for a piece of someone else? Wouldn't it feel good to know that existing in solitude, maybe if that is the route that you have to take, feels good than having someone there and them not really knowing how to talk to you, not knowing how to treat you, not knowing how to make you feel special? There is always something different. And sometimes we trick ourselves in the mind or we have this fear that we're never going to have anything else or anything better or we're going to make a decision to leave and then we're not going to be able to take a step back you're never going to miss out of being in a situation where someone is not treating you right and sometimes we need to hear that because we forget and all of the things that we settle for we forget what we're worth and i wanted to make this video to remind you to stand up and get your mind out of that. <laughs> I'm just playing. Just stand up, baby. It's okay for them not to be okay, right for you. It's okay to want something else or just to discover something else. You deserve that. This is a sign of God's protection. You have the discernment of something that doesn't feel good. And that is enough to leave. You're taking every sign and you're wasting your precious time on assuming that they are going to be any different from what they showed you. And some people wait and they have children with said people. Some people wait and they, you know, start businesses with said people. And it's like you don't want to make it a liability for yourself. So I'm giving you the video because you know, it was 222 and 333 and 444 and all of the angel numbers told me to tell you it's time to go. It's time to pick up and leave. And do it with dignity. Do it with pride because they are going to miss out on so many amazing things because they did not know how to treat you. They did not know how to love you. And most important that they didn't want to try. They didn't want to learn how. So they don't get to just stand in your life in the way of someone else that possibly could. So, I love you. Hope to see you in my next one. <laughs>